to our Holy Thursday service this evening. It is the night of the year when we especially remember Jesus' last night of life. On that night, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. He was the master of all and also the servant of all. On that night, Jesus shared a last meal with his disciples a meal that we still share together, a meal that reminds us that only God can truly satisfy our souls. And on that night, Jesus urged his disciples to love one another as he loved them, as he loves us. And so tonight we remember the water, we remember the bread and the cup, and we remember this call to love one another. Please pray with me as we begin our worship this evening. Holy God, cleanse our hearts this night. Feed us this night. May we receive your love this night and be strengthened in our love for one another. We pray in the name of Jesus, who is the light of the world, who is the bread of life, who is the living water, who is the source of love. Amen.
night of Jesus' life, which we hear about um, in each of the Gospels in a different way. And we hear a particular story in the 13th chapter of John about Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And I want to share that scripture with you tonight in the message translation, which is a little fresh, a little different. So I invite you to listen for, listen for the word of God in these words. This is uh, the 13th chapter of John, verses 1 through 17, and then 31 through 35. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world to go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them, right to the end. It was supper time. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for the betrayal. Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God, and that he was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, he set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured water. Into a basin. And he began to wash the feet of the disciples drying them with, with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, P Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted. I'm not, you're not going to wash my feet ever. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, not only my feet then, wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, if you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said not every one of you. After he'd finished washing their feet, he took his robe and he put it back on, and he went back to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I've done for you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That's what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, wash your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it. Live a blessed life. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God is seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. In glorifying him, he himself is glorified. Glory all around. Children, I am with you for only a short time longer. You're going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I'm telling you, where I go, you're not able to come. Let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you're my dis disciples when they see the love that you have for each other. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a second part of Jesus' last evening with his disciples that we also remember tonight when he shared a meal with them. So hear now these words from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 22 through 25. 
in the course of their meal, having taken and blessed the bread, he broke it and he gave it to them. He said, this is my body. And taking the cup, he gave it to them, thanking God. And they drank from it. They all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood, God's new covenant, poured out for many people. I'll not be drinking wine again until the new day when I drink it in the kingdom of God. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Loving, listening God, ever attentive to the voices of those in need, we call on your name so that we might live. Now hear our prayer. For the church that bears Christ's name, we pray that the world might know that we are his disciples by the love that we share with one another. For leaders of nations, for all people in positions of authority, we pray that their lives might be marked with Christ-like love and service. For all who are oppressed and living in captivity, we pray that they may escape from evil and death to find the land of freedom that you've promised for each of us, your children. For those who are hungry and thirsty this day, and also for those who have too much, we pray. We pray that we might learn to share your generous gifts with each other, that all of us would feast. And for those who are dealing with loss, for those who are facing death, we pray that the presence of Christ may bless them and keep them. And we lift up to you now, silently or aloud, our own prayers for wherever we are in our own lives right now, this night. God, answer us in the day of trouble so that we may lift up the cup of salvation in the presence of your people, giving thanks for all of your goodness to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Tonight is often a night when we celebrate communion and share it together, which we're not able to do in person this evening. Um, but in the United Methodist tradition, there is something called a, a love feast, which John Wesley experienced on a boat, on a ship coming across the ocean with a group of Moravians, with, who, uh, a group of, of Germans who uh, this was part of their practice. And it really spoke to him and he found it to be a means of grace, a way that he experienced the grace of God in the midst of this voyage that he was on. 
Um, he wrote in his diary about it. He said, after evening prayers, we joined the Germans in one of their love feasts. It was be begun and ended with thanksgiving and prayer, celebrated in so decent and solemn a manner um, as a Christian of the apostolic age would have allowed it to be worthy of Christ. Um, and so it's something that the love feast is something that still it became practice often when Methodism was spreading across the United States. Um, and it's something that, that we'll be able to share together tonight. Uh, love feast is a way that we receive the love of God when we can't have communion. It's a way that we celebrate our unity with each other, our love for each other, like what Jesus talks about in John 13, when he says, love one another as I've loved you. Um, they're, they're a way that, and it's, and it's a means of grace, a way of celebrating God's ongoing presence with us. Um, just as we celebrate our ongoing love for each other as a church community. So tonight, as we do this, I invite you to, if you don't already have them, to get three things for your table. Um, the first of, the, of those is a, is a light. It could be a candle like this. It could be an electric uh, candle. It can be uh, whatever, whatever kind of light, whatever thing that you have in your house that can symbolize light. Um, I also invite you to get bread. It can be crackers. It can be any piece of bread you have laying around, gluten-free, gluten, whatever it is, it works. And also I invite you to get a cup. It can have water in it. Um, it can have juice in it. It can have tea or coffee in it. Um, what, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. The point is that we have each of these three things. And so if you need to pause the video to go get those now, you're welcome to. And if you have them with you, when you have them with you, I invite you to take a look at the light. The light represents Jesus, who is the light of the world for each of us, and whose light no darkness has, or can, or will overcome. In Matthew 5, Jesus also tells us that we are to be light. So it's not just we, we, Jesus is the light of the world, um, and as disciples, our job is to be light. And he puts it this way. He says, um, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So our light represents Jesus, the light of the world, and it's also a reminder to us to shine our own light. Uh, to not to not put it under the bushel basket, but to put it on the lampstand for all to see. Second, we have bread. Jesus is the bread of life that satisfies our deepest hunger. In John 6, Jesus tells the crowd he's talking about, he's trying to help them understand the feeding of the 5,000, um, which they don't understand. And he says to them, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that no one so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread come down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live. And as we remembered earlier on this holy night, holy Thursday, Jesus broke bread with his disciples and shared it with them. And they were fed, not just in their bodies, but in their souls. It was a meal they'd always remember. It's a meal that we, uh, as disciples of Jesus, 2,000 plus years later, we also remember it. Um, it's a meal that is, is, is anchoring in our faith. It reminds us of the true bread, and it also reminds us of our, of our connection to each other as we share that bread. And then third, we have the cup. Maybe you have water in your cup, maybe juice, maybe something else. In John 7, just after Jesus talks about being the bread of life, he goes on to talk about being the living water. And he says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. And then on the night before he died, Jesus passed the cup among his disciples. And he told them to drink from it that it's the cup of salvation, which is his blood poured out for the world. And so we also share this cup, this cup of the new covenant. Uh, it's a reminder of 
Jesus being the living water that quenches all thirst. It's a reminder of the promise of new life and new hope that he gives us. And so now that you have these things, I invite you to, to eat them and to drink and to see the light. As you do, as you eat the bread, as you, as you drink from the cup, remember God's love. Remember our love. Remember that you are loved deeply. Remember that we all are loved, that God loves humanity. And remember that you're part of a community that loves you even if we can't sit down at this table together. Wherever we are, our call is the same. It's a call to love one another as Jesus has loved us, which can look like different things at different times and maybe looks a little different tonight than it has on past Holy Thursdays. That's what this feast is about. That's what this night, Holy Thursday, is about. It's about Jesus' love for us, and it's about that call we have to love one another as he loved us. It's our gift. It's our call. Because love is the strongest thing there is. And so we thank God for that. So I invite you to eat and drink and remember these gifts of God and know that God loves you. God is close. Amen. Closes, I invite you to join me in a closing, closing prayer. And this was taken from the Rev Gal Pals website. Please pray with me. Holy God, you have fed us all out of your own generous and gracious hands. From them, we've received welcome, nourishment, hope, and consolation. May these things grow in us alongside the gift of faith so that we may plant their seeds in the world around us. Through the Holy Spirit, guide us in the days ahead to remember our place in your great and ongoing story of resurrection, redemption, and restoration through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us go sharing welcome, nourishment, and love, knowing that God loves us so much and that we're to love one another. Amen.